Eric, we just had a uh, press conference uh, from Rotax on an air box update to the engine. Well, Dave, what happened was two years ago, they introduced the injected engine, the IS. And uh, since that time, Rotax has been working on ways to tweak the design and make it a little better. What they just released is what's called the IS Sport. And this is what you see here. It doesn't look much different on the outside, but the biggest thing is this air box that we're looking at here is no longer plastic. It's now aluminum, and it's about a little over an inch taller, 20, 27, 26 millimeters taller in this area. A little more than that, though, it's a little deeper. The intake runners have also been increased in size, and inside the tubes are now tuned better to increase the torque, particularly in that climb range when you really need it. The propeller is biting for, for, for climb. They uh, also went ahead and changed at that time the coils, the ignition coils were changed on how they connect the wires. The original IS was having a little radio noise suppression issues and these were vibration. They went to a threaded prong connector, which is familiar to the IS uh, customers who had a ULS before. This now eliminates some of the radio noise issues. Because we increased the torque enough, obviously, and it changed the breathing, it also means that the software package in the computer has changed. So working with Rockwell Collins, they developed a brand new software package that comes with the sport. In addition, the increased torque also caused that the, we had to take the gearbox overload clutch that was mounted internally. And that overload clutch now we increased the slipping torque to the 600 newton meters on the slide to accommodate that extra torque pulse of the peak. So the pilot's going to feel that this engine is more responsive, it's going to get better climb, it's going to get shorter takeoff roll, and as a result, with fixed pitch props, you're going to see a little increase in speed at the top end as well. So it's a, it's a big win. Now, is this retrofitable to, to all of the ISs that are out there now? To an IS that's existing, it's completely retrofitable on the engine. However, the aircraft manufacturer should issue what's called an LOA or letter of authorization, and they have to proof that this extra bit of clearance is not going to be uh, they need is not going to be a problem in their cowling. Uh, the engine kits, good bonus though, is we're going to make them available to all owners who purchased an existing one, free of charge. Projected date is up until the end of October of 2014, and beyond that time we'll see what's available. But uh, the only thing the owner would have to pay for after, for when they get one of these kits would be the installation time labor. That will vary from aircraft to aircraft, anywhere from four to six hours projected. Uh, I only did one so far, and it was less than six hours to put it on and install it. Because, of course, it requires removal and replacement of the propeller. And if you don't have to do any cowling changes, that's about the point in time rate. But uh, overall, it's an easy install. You do need some special tools. The person doing it should have a heavy maintenance rating with an higher key or independent Rotex maintenance technician because they have to remove the gearbox and change the overload clutch internally and it requires a little bit of specialized work. There's a couple of specialized tools, a special driver to remove and replace the intakes because they have to disassemble the injector system and mount all of that back onto the new manifolds. And we do have an exemplar kit here. We can show you what a kit looks like, how it comes out of the box, so people can see what they're actually getting. It's a, it's a pretty impressive piece of work. They should be starting to deliver kits to customers before the summer. And that's, that's good news for people for the flying season, I think, who have an IS. And any engines delivered uh, after the kits are available will be uh, IS. It will be the sport version, at least from the America's distribution side goes. The other existing uh, injected engine will still be available if there's a demand for it. I think, however, most people are going to want to use the sport. Let's go have a look at one of the kits then. Sure. Pull the casting paper out of this particular pre-production sport kit. And what you see is it looks like a couple of parts. If I lift off this assembly, 
What we have now is a complete assembly ready to drop on your engine. You would use your own injection and rails. You would use your own electrical wiring to provide all the coils with the high tension wires already mounted and identified. And to the IS owners, they'll notice that this is much larger and the manifolds are cast larger in this area. The increase in height is right here. And all of your sensors fit in exactly the same spot. They do provide us with some special brackets that will go on here to tie the sensors into place. Now this particular is a mock-up, that's why it has it on for flight. But, uh, the standard one won't have this. This is aluminum now rather than plastic. It gives us more room. Uh, if we had a nice light, we could shine it. You can see the actual tuning tubes internally. And this is where we're getting the torque increase on the engine. And it's uh, really going to bring it and wake it up for you if you have an existing IS. It's still going to sip fuel. It's not going to be bad at all, but simple to install. So the package parts comes with all of the necessary brackets, some extra Dell clamps, new O-rings, new screws, new ties, okay, uh, all of the components that you need to install the kit will be with it, so it's, a, it's going to be comprehensive as normal, and it'll come with a complete set of instructions to lay it out. Now you mentioned the overload clutch, that's going to be just a drop-in replacement unit? Yes, it'll be a drop-in unit where the person will have to take the gearbox off, it'll have to be taken apart by an experienced technician, because it's going to require reshimming, and then the exchange, the overload clutch they have, and the overload clutches that come off will be returned, and we'll be reworking those for future kits. Okay. Okay, Eric, so you've got someone out there that is interested in updating to this. What is the process for them to apply or to get well, in touch with someone? For the customers in the United States, contact your regional independent service center. You can locate these at going to rotaxflyingclub.com or you can go to kodiakbs.com. Also, the flyrotax.com website will give you the addresses of all of these service partners worldwide. They have about 19 distributors worldwide and there are hundreds of service points, service centers that can help people uh, obtain these kits when they're available. Expected availability is they'll start delivering the kits in the middle to end of May and that means that the serial production uh, sport engines will start being available by early summer, I would say the end of June to July. Correct, this is 2014 and what's going to happen is I know that the U.S. distributors made the decision that all IS that are currently in their inventory that will be converted to sport before they're delivered and these will be fresh date stamped so as far as warranty purposes go it, these are going to be zero time brand new engines with uh, the sport kit installed. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.